The Royal Malaysian Police PDRM have successfully saved 16 Malaysians in Priya Sihanouk province, Cambodia, who were allegedly duped by lucrative job offers as customer service officers in the country. All 16 victims, 15 men and 1 woman, aged between 19 and 43, were saved with the assistance of Interpol, ASEAN Police, the Foreign Ministry and the Cambodian Police. Bukit Aman Criminal Investigations Department Director Datuk Sri Abdul Jalil Hassan said all the victims were rescued around noon on 5th April. In a statement, he said they were all deceived through Facebook and the cost of their trip there were borne by a company in Cambodia. He explained that as soon as the victims arrived in Cambodia, their arrival documents were seized, their movements were controlled and they were kept under tight security. Datuk Sri Abdul Jali said the victims realised they were deceived only after arriving in Cambodia and they were forced to work as scammers. All the victims are safe and are currently in Phnom Penh, Cambodia while waiting for their flight home to Malaysia. He then reminded the public to be cautious of job ads offering lucrative salaries in foreign countries to avoid being exploited by irresponsible parties for their profit. Earlier, Foreign Minister Datuk Zuri Saifuddin Abdullah confirmed that 16 Malaysians have been detained by the Cambodian authorities and were at a police station in Phnom Penh for investigations. Selalunya apa yang berlaku ialah sebaik saja kita dapat maklumat ini maka malah wakil akan hantar wakil ke pejabat polis itu dan uh, cuba mengadakan pertemuan dengan uh, mereka yang di yang ditahan ini. Lazimnya hubungan kita dengan pihak berkuasa Cambodia ni baik ya. Uh, dia yang jadi masalah ni bila dia kita tak tahu mereka di mana. On whether those detained were part of a group of job scam victims highlighted by the MCA Public Services and Complaints Department in a media conference on Wednesday, the Indra Makota MP said that it had not been determined yet. He did, however, advise Malaysians to be careful when taking up job offers from foreign countries and not be easily influenced by high-paying job offers and to check with the Foreign Ministry or the Malaysia Representative Office Malawakil in the respective country. Police will begin their investigation into the incident where four foreign divers went missing in waters of Pulau Tokong Sangut Mersing after the three victims who were found safe recover. Joe Police Chief Datuk Kamaru Zaman Mamat said the investigation will cover various aspects including the qualifications of Norwegian dive instructor Christian Grodham and whether negligence occurred during the dive. Siasatan dari segi adakah ada kecuaian berlaku dalam uh, pengendalian latihan, aktiviti latihan itu mematuhi, mematuhi peraturan yang ditetapkan oleh uh, mereka ada dari segi cara-cara uh, uh, apa ni untuk menyelamat. The four divers had been reported missing last Wednesday after they went diving some nine nautical miles of Tanjung Leman Musing. Grodham, 35, who was the first to be rescued, was found floating fully suited in diving gear by a tugboat en route from Indonesia to Thailand at 8.15 p.m. on Thursday. Adrian Peter Chastis, 46, a British national, and a French woman, Alex, uh, Alexandra Molina, 18, were later found by local fishermen at around 1 a.m. Meanwhile, Dutch team Nathan Renz Chassis, 14, were confirmed to have died after succumbing to exhaustion. On another matter, Datuk Kamaru Zaman said the Johor Police contingent has not received any report of criminal case involving Singaporeans since the country's border was reopened on 1st April. He said, however, there were some cases of breaking and entering reported as the residents of Singaporean were mostly abandoned for about two years. He said investigations revealed that some houses were found to be broken into after the border was closed in March 2020. Itu, itu yang, uh, yang tapi kejadian-kejadian jenayah lain seperti ragu, samun apa semua tak ada. Tak ada berlaku dalam tempoh satu minggu kerana keseluruhan pihak PDRM meng, menempatkan hampir 1,600 orang di 41 lokasi. 
Datuk Kamaru Zaman said this after a breaking of fast event for Tamba police officers and personnel at Angsana Johor Bahru Mall yesterday. He also said that the traffic at several tourist hotspots are under control and not congested. The government is confident of obtaining two support of two-thirds of MPs to amend Article 10 of the federal constitution tomorrow. Communications and Multimedia Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said their support was very important to enable the upcoming tabling of the anti-party hopping bill. According to Tan Sri Anwar, the issue is that as long as the constitution is not amended, the tabling of the bill cannot happen as the law states whichever law that contradicts the constitution is automatically null and void. As such, the minister said there is a need for the government to amend Article 10 of the federal constitution. He said the draft bill will be distributed to all members of the technical committee as soon as it is completed. Meanwhile, he said there was no conflict in the cabinet meeting over the bill, only several differences in opinions, which he said was a usual matter. Adapun kata nah cabinet tolak round itu lagi lah tak betulnya tak timbul soal tolak, ya. tapi kena buat mengikut apa tu susunan dan oleh kerana ada beberapa alternatif kabinet sebulat suara memilih pendekatan dua step ya meminda terlebih dahulu perlembagaan mengadakan enabling clause dan selepas itu membawa rang undang-undang khusus yang dapat menguraikan dengan terperinci tentang uh, larangan uh, bertukar parti The Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry, MOTEC, has asked the Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry, KPDNHEP, to provide a guideline to ensure that patent cloth face masks produced by craft entrepreneurs meet serum specifications. Minister Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri said when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the country in 2020, MOTEC had encouraged craft entrepreneurs, especially single mothers and those from the B40 group, to sew cloth masks that comply with World Health Organization WHO standards. Kami nak mendapat uh, pengesahan lanjut daripada KBT and HAP untuk membantu kita membantu lagi memberi uh, panduan kepada uh, penambah pengusaha kraf kita. Kita tidak dapat duduk diam kerana pengusaha kraf adalah kita punya community dan perlu kita bantu. On Thursday, KPD and AGP announced that the enforcement of the gazetted trade descriptions, certification and marking of non-medical face masks under 2022, Order 2022 under the Trade Descriptions Act 2011 would be postponed to 1st January next year instead of 4th July this year. Under the law, non-medical grade face masks must have the MS Serum Certification and marking from Serum QAS International, Sindirian Berhad. Meanwhile, Dr. Suri Nancy said a total of 252,730 travellers had been recorded as of 4th April since the country's borders reopened. The government is targeting the export value of wood-based products, including wood and furniture, to reach 19 billion ringgit by 2025 under the National Agri-Commodity Policy DAKN 2021-2030. Plantation, Industries and Commodities Minister Dato' Zuraida Kamarudin said the wooden furniture industry therefore has positive growth potential this year with rising demand from key markets in line with the country's transition to endemic phase. Malaysia, the world's 10th biggest exporter of furniture and furniture components, recorded an export value of 10.41 billion ringgit last year, with five main export destinations, including the United States, Japan, Singapore, the United Kingdom and Australia. In a media conference after an engagement session held with the Malaysian Furniture Council, MFC, Dr. Zuraida also noted that her ministry will also organize the Malaysia International Agri-Commodity Expo and Summit from 26 to 28 July at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Centre, Kuala Lumpur. Elaborating on the session with MFC, Dr. Zuraida said the ministry will look into the delivery charges which are said to be quite high for local furniture exports to the extent of burdening business operators and other industry players. 
She said it will study the reason for the higher shipping charges for the country compared to China, which have led to exports of local furniture being delayed as the industry players could not afford to pay. Kuala Lumpur City FC finally found their winning rhythm after defeating Melaka United FC 2-0 in a Super League match at Kuala Lumpur Football Stadium in Chiras last night. At the action in Chiras, team captain Paulo Josu was the toast of KL City to recover from two consecutive losses when he slammed in two goals in the first half to end the club's goal drought. The Brazilian import put the City boys ahead in the third minute after snatching ball from the opponent's defender who late in clearing to hit past goalkeeper Norazlan Razali. Josu doubled the score for the hosts in the 30th minute with a precise finishing touch to beat Norazlan again for the second goal. After starting the season with a draw followed by two losses, the squad under coach Boyan Hoda leaped to the sixth spot after four matches with the three precious points collected tonight. While Malacca United fell to the 10th spot with only one point from four games. This afternoon, in our top story, Malaysians are duped by fake jumps in Cambodia rescued. We are updated at noon with a clip of South Koreans enjoying cherry blossoms as the country continues to ease restrictions despite high COVID infection numbers. The annual cherry blossom festival at Bul Gwangchon has been cancelled the past two years due to COVID restrictions. Thanks for your company. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Stay tuned to TV2.